and welcome to our talk on ETO, Practical Improved Design Static Analysis for Ethereum Smart Contract. I'm Clara. I'm Markus. And this is joint work with our colleagues Ilya Kleschenko and Matteo Maffei from TOV. Why do we want to analyze Ethereum smart contracts? Smart contracts are distributed programs that are running in the context of a blockchain-based cryptocurrency such as Ethereum and that control real money. So consequently, bugs in such programs can cause immediate money loss. In the cryptocurrency Ethereum, bugs in smart contracts have already been exploited several times. One very famous example is the so-called the DAO bug, where 60 million of dollars have been stolen by an attacker. The DAO was actually a crowdfunding contract with a buggy functionality to retrieve back donated money. So users of the system could donate money to this contract for a certain purpose, but then there was an attack possible in which an attacker created a malicious contract and in this way could actually steal money from honest users by first donating some money and then retrieving this money back again and again. But now the question is, how can this be prevented? So a promising way to do so is actually the use of static program analyzers. The idea of a static program analyzer is that a program before running it or publishing it, in our case on the blockchain, when is checking whether this program is satisfying a certain security property or showing a certain problematic behavior. Analyzers can then give three possible outcomes. They can label a contract as safe, as unsafe, or they don't give a decision because they reach a timeout or they diverge. We are particularly interested in analyzers that give safety guarantees. If the analyzer indicates safety, then a contract should never show behavior violating a security property. We say that such analyzers are sound. This is particularly important when, like in the case of Ethereum smart contracts, money is on stake. So far, all existing tools, even though claiming to be sound, failed actually to give such guarantees. This in particular applies to the state-of-the-art tools Securify and Zeus. This shows that designing such a sound static analysis tool for smart contracts is particularly challenging. And this is also because analyzers should not only be sound, but they should also be performant and precise, so they should rarely diverge and label as many contracts safe as possible. To understand the particular challenges when designing a static analyzer of Ethereum smart contracts, we need to consider the workings of Ethereum. In Ethereum, metrics participants jointly maintain an append-only data structure, the blockchain, from which they then can compute the global system state. And the global system state in the case of Ethereum consists of user accounts that are owned and controlled by users and of contract accounts that are controlled by the code. Then the global state of the system is updated according to the transactions that are appended to the blockchain. And these transactions can, for example, be the transfer of money or the creation of new contract accounts. And then also the invocation of existing contracts. When a contract is invoked, its code is executed and this code execution can again trigger further interactions with other contracts. So this is also what happened in the case of the DAO. A user created a contract that he used to interact with the DAO contract to first donate money and then to exploit the bug in the DAO's code to actually retrieve more money back than he donated before. The issue in the DAO contract was that it could be unintentionally re-entered by an attacker contract. We speak in this case of a re-entrancy bug. The programming language that smart contracts are written in is so-called EVM bytecode. This is an assembly-like stack-based language that features domain-specific constructs for environment access and also for these interactions with other accounts. So what are now the challenges when analyzing smart contracts in EVM bytecode? First of all, to achieve a sound and performant analysis, it is crucial that the analysis captures all possible behaviors of the program, but summarizes and simplifies them in a way that automatic logical solvers, such as SMP solvers, can efficiently reason about it. What makes this particularly hard in the context of Ethereum is that smart contracts need to be considered reactive programs that interact with an unknown environment. So all possible effects of this environment on the contract execution need to be modeled. Next, the EVM bytecode is not very suitable for a static analysis, actually. This is, first of all, since it has a non-standard memory layout, which requires that well used on copying them between memory and stack need to be converted. Also, it features little static information. So for example, the jump destinations in a contract are not known upfront, but they are computed on a stack and hence the control flow graph is not necessarily known. The way to cope with this complexity is on the one hand side to come up with advanced domain-specific abstractions, and on the other hand side to perform pre-processing to recover as much static information on individual contract instances as possible. So for example, to try to recover jump destinations. And when doing that, one always needs to evaluate whether the chosen abstractions and pre-processing steps are still sound and would they give a performance analysis tool in the end. To this end, one needs to perform proofs and one needs to actually conduct practical experiments 
And based on these results, we find the abstractions of the preprocessing. This is a very cumbersome and error prone process since it technically requires to re implement the analyzer in each iteration step. To solve this issue, we invented HOST. HOST is an intermediate language for specifying the analysis on a high level. And this allows them to easily reason about the samples of the analysis. What HOST allows is to give uh, the analysis in terms of an abstract semantics in the form of horn clauses. So horn clauses are logical implications that can be used to describe abstracted execution steps. And to prove the soundness with respect to a real language semantic that we have also formalized in prior work, one can show that actually all real-world execution steps of a contract can be simulated by a sequence of such abstract execution steps as they are described by home clauses. Based on this formalization in host, we now wrote a compiler that automatically takes the host specification of the abstract semantics and translates it into an analysis tool, which then inherits the soundness guarantee, and that we can also use for empirically evaluating the performance of the resulting tool on benchmarks and test cases. As I mentioned before, we are focusing on static analysis that are formulated as abstract semantics in the form of form clauses. So the general idea is that each concrete contract execution, which can be seen as a sequence of concrete configurations, can actually be mimicked by an abstract execution. So following the framework of abstract interpretation, one can define an abstraction function that maps a concrete configuration into its most precise abstraction, which is an abstract configuration that closely reflects the original concrete configuration. In our case, an abstract configuration is just a set of predicate applications. And the abstract horn clause semantics describes how such an abstract configuration can, by logical deduction, evolve into other abstract configurations. In this process, an abstract configuration can lose precision. To express this, we order the abstract configurations by the level of abstraction. So now for proving softness, it is only important to show that for a sequence of concrete execution steps, one can also find a sequence of abstract execution steps where precision with respect to the concrete execution is at most lost. So we can say that we want that each abstract execution ends up in an abstract configuration that is at least as abstract as the most precise abstraction of the corresponding concrete configuration. This connection ensures that if we can exclude problematic behavior on the level of abstract executions, then we can also do so for all concrete executions. Hello. I will now give you an overview on how we translate our abstract semantics to optimize the inputs for SMT solvers. The first input of the analysis is the bytecode of a contract. This bytecode is parsed and a conservative pre-analysis propagates constants within basic blocks. The second input is a declarative specification of the abstract semantics in our own specification language host, which can access data obtained in the first step via parameter interface. The host compiler then instantiates the abstract rules, translates high-level host constructs such as types, operations, and bounded iterations to an intermediate home class format, and prunes predicates that are either trivially unreachable or irrelevant for our current analysis. We then try to further reduce the complexity of our clause set by applying different transformations from literature. Since the efficacy of these transformations is dependent on the structure of the analyzed contracts, we implemented different optimization strategies. In the last step, we encode our optimized clause set to SMTlib and invoke set 3 on it. The big advantage of this architecture is the EVM-specific part of the analysis is relatively small and mostly declarative. This makes it easy to experiment with different abstractions and allows for analyzing different properties and even different bytecode languages in the future by reusing most of the analysis engine. So how is the performance of EVO? As a first benchmark, we encoded all 604 relevant tests from the official Ethereum test suite. We were able to solve 99% of these tests in less than one second, and in 85% we solved the test precisely, meaning that the abstraction we derived was the most complete one. The large-scale experiment was conducted on the benchmark introduced with the ZOOS tool. After taking care of some of the problems in this benchmark, like duplicates, we are left with 720 contracts, which we analyzed for entrance bugs. For 712 of these contracts, we were able to manually establish the ground proof according to our formal definition of reentrancy, and evaluate Ether and Zeus against it. As we can see in the graph, the majority of contracts in the benchmarks were non-reentrant. We can see on the left side that Ether in the non-hatched area has more false positives marked in red than Zeus. This is due to the use of only sound abstractions. Looking at the right side, we see the experimental affirmation for Ether's soundness. There are no false negatives, where Zeus classifies many contracts deemed reentrant according to our formal definitions non-reentrant. With regard to F-measure, therefore, Ethor outperforms SUS at 89-20%. In conclusion, we present Ethor, the first automated provably sound static analysis tool for Ethereum smart contracts. Ethor is practical and shows competitive performance when compared to the state of the art. 
Lastly, we introduce Horst, a new specification language for the modular side of static analysis tools. Thank you for your attention.